You were just talking about how the U.S. economy may be not as good as some people think. Tie consumer debt into this, given the fact that we have seen delinquencies starting to tick up. Yeah, sure, Lisa. For me, there's uh, three indicators. Two of them will come out this week to show us that the U.S. economy is in a late cycle. First is a 12-month moving average of non-farm payrolls. That peaked in 2015, almost 100,000 higher than the current 12-month average. Other indicator of late cycle is auto sales. Same kind of story, 12-month moving average, also turning down. Third factor, and you mentioned delinquency on credit cards going up. This is another thing for me is late cycle, telling me there's stress in the economy. So what I suspect is going to happen is we're going to get this fiscal stimulus, and that will extend the recovery further. But then, then, we, then it turns down for real, and that's either uh, late 2019 or early 2020. And this credit card stress is just another sign that American households, average American households, struggling to make ends meet, partly because wages are not keeping pace with inflation and productivity. This is a really important point, and a story just crossed the Bloomberg terminal, rising rates sounding alarm bells for debt late. U.S. consumers. Fewer than 40 percent of U.S. consumers say they always pay their credit cards in uh, full. I'm just wondering, you know, how much will the increases in Fed funds rates start to affect these consumers with higher rates? Yeah, probably not that much, partly because, you know, on our credit cards, the c credit card companies didn't cut our rates that much when interest rates were at zero. They're not raising them that much now. I think what's happening now is just the accumulation of past debt rather than interest rates. But on the other hand, mortgages, many mortgages, some still tied to variable rates, tied to LIBOR, not to some kind of T-bill index. This is where some pressure is going to be felt as well. Within this is the arch question, thinking of William Gross, scheduled to be with us Friday on Jobs Day, uh, is, is the financial repression. I mean, now that the Fed funds target rate inflation adjusted is almost back to zero, do you just assume that we'll fade out of our financial repression, the retirement agony of the last 10 years? Yeah, I, don't know. I see people talk about financial repression, but at the same time, I see financial institutions reporting record profits. I get it, but come on, retirees are getting crushed. Yes, no the, I, think, I, think, I think that's the problem. It's not so much the financial repression. I think the low interest rates, which stimulate <clears> the economy, create jobs, is not helping everybody equally. So what, what's your projection of when we're going to see the next uh, recession? Yeah, so I'm looking at the downturn. First, I think we get a growth recession, by which I mean less than 1% GDP latter part of next year. And then when, that's when the fiscal stimulus runs out, monetary tightening still biting, get the downturn ahead of the 2020 elections.